Oh yeah, these are gonna be good. Oh yeah, you're gonna be good too. Hey guys, how the frig's it going? It's Wednesday evening. I just got home from work about two hours ago. Wasn't gonna vlog and then I said, well fuck, I'm off tomorrow. Might as well. You're probably thinking, Adam, what do you mean you're off tomorrow? Yeah, I'm off tomorrow. I don't work tomorrow. I got Thursday off and then I go back to work Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then next week, holy shit, talk about friggin' awesome. I got Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday off, and then Thursday at 11 p.m. I go back to work. And then I work Thursday, Friday, then I got Saturday off, and then I work Sunday. Basically the way it works is I'm only allowed to work 40 hours a week. Because this week I'm getting like, like 56 hours, they can only give me 24 hours for next week. And that makes your full 80 hours, right? Yeah, the math works. So. That's what they do. That's what this after. That's why a lot of people love the after hour shift and want it. And I don't understand how come me and the other two noobs that were hired are getting it because we're new. We don't really have seniority. It doesn't make any sense. People love it because like, for instance, after next week, next week we work, uh, oh, this week, like I say, I'm off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then I work Thursday, Friday, and then I'm off Saturday, then I work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then I'm off Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at the end of the month. That's a fucking four days off. That's pretty friggin' awesome. And it happens like that all the time. So it literally gives you like a long weekend, like a really long weekend, which is pretty BA if you ask me. Same pay, just a lot more work because now you're doing a lot more shit and there's nobody to really back up on. So you gotta be like on the ball and be able to solve problems like big time. So pretty cool, pretty cool. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm fucking stoked. Like, I'm really happy that this is happening. Quite possibly the coolest thing ever. So instead of working five days a week, you end up working like, well, you work five, six days a week, some weeks, but other weeks you end up working three. So it's like, you don't really worry about vacation at this time because you're getting a whole bunch of fucking time off. So instead of planning your vacation or planning a vacation, what you do is you plan your vacation around when you're gonna be off because they usually upload the schedules at work anyway, three months in advance. So I'm gonna know what I'm working in August and September and that. So if I wanted to do something, I could just plan it around those days that I'm off and then fucking do, you know? Still get paid and life is great. So all in all, fucking decent, right? So on Monday it was sunny out and I shot a video but I ended up deleting it because it was just fucking bullshit just me ramp ranting and raving and I don't want to make videos like that anymore but uh, this container here this is that stuff I bought a while back I think it was maybe last year or the year before I can't remember now I think it was last year this roundup and I used it all on the plants behind the garage and it worked bleh and the major content in this is ammonia okay that's all it is well this pump doesn't work anymore so I mentioned I was going to go to Cambodia and Tire and pick up a new pump jug or whatever the hell you want to call that and I did. I bought one of these. Uh, they were on sale for 15 bucks. They're red flagged. I don't know what the hell that means. I don't know if they're discontinuing them or what, but it was $15 flat, not $14.99 or $15.99. It was $15 and it holds, uh, I don't know what, a gallon, I guess. Yeah, one gallon, four liters of fluids. You pump the top like you do with that one and then you squirt it with that guy, kind of like I just did in my pants. Also, I bought myself a replacement gun for my hose. It uh, doesn't have the trigger on it. It's got one of these levers in the back that you just full bore, no go. And screws on your hose, simply easy peasy. Made in Taiwan. I think it's a Yardworks. No, it's Dram, whatever. But it's got the multi-head selector, so you can make it rain, you can do a widespread, you can do a jet, you can do a tight jet, like a real tight jet, you know whatever you need to do to get the job did i don't know what the hell that one is that's just weird like what does it do shoot you back in the face whatever so and then you pick your what you want on the side here and uh yeah and like right now it's set to make it rain so i'm assuming that's all the holes in the center and around the edge pretty cool pretty cool so that was on sale for like 10 bucks so i grabbed one of those so, Dad, if you're watching, you don't need to bring yours. I have one now. Uh, basically, he was going to come over one of these weeks and uh, mix the concrete in the back and pour it in that hole in the shed. And I told him I don't have a gun for the hose because, basically, if you're mixing bags of concrete, you need a water supply nearby, right? 
And if you just have a hose head, that means you're constantly hose head. Huh? That means you're constantly running out here to turn on the tap and then turn off the tap, and where you're doing the hose kinking technique, and that just ruins hoses. So I picked this up. What the fuck was that? Okay, either I'm losing my mind or something just ran past me. Probably a rodent, friggin' mice, eh? Should set up some traps in here, but ah, let them live. They're outdoors. When they get in the house, that's when they die. So, if they stay out here, I'm cool with it. So I figure we'll do a little vlog unboxing. So this is the sprayer. Pretty decent. <coughs> Very basic, but should, you know, do the job. And the Big Baba. Oh yeah, the Big Baba. I guess you fill it from the top, I don't know. There's probably instructions down there, I'll have to look it up. But uh, chances are you just take this thing off the top and then fill it from there. Cool! And that's exactly it. Just take the top off, unscrews, and then you load your fluids into it. So I'm gonna load my homemade herbicide into this thing. Can't spray today because fuck, sky's falling. So it is what it is, and uh, we'll spray on a nice day. Ah, alrighty, we got it all set up. So basically you turn to unlock it, and then you just pump. It puts pressure in there. So I'll pump her up. Pump it up, pump it up, pump it up. Then when you're done, you push this thing all the way down, turn it, lock it. And you can carry it around. Or we'll just grab the hose here. And you can right out yeah pretty decent Go around spray some plants and I guess you can turn the end to change if you want it into a mist or into a, a spray so I loosen off the end now it just sprays right out yeah it's like taking a piss sweet of course, I shouldn't waste this, it's raining. But when you want to release the pressure, just grab here and done like dinner. Shouldn't have anything in it. Now it just urinates. Beauty plan, boys. Beauty plan. So that's fucking sweet. Just sit that over here for now. I'm cooking the shit out of some bochats and some mushrooms. So that should be awesome for dinner. Also at work yesterday, um, we got talking about that Mandela effect. Some of you probably heard about it. Fuck, there's enough of you out there. Somebody had to have heard about it, right? Like, I could have sworn it was called Jiffy Peanut Butter. Not Jiff. Jiffy. Apparently there was never a Y on it. I always remembered it with a Y. Go figure. That Disney movie, um, what the fuck is it? Snow White. I always thought the line was mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? No, it's Magic Mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Why the fuck am I saying Mirror Mirror? I always remember it as Mirror Mirror. Fuck, they made a movie called Mirror Mirror. And it's still called Mirror Mirror. So, what the Christ is really going on here? You know, when I watched uh, Star Wars and I actually dug up, um, Dad gave me all the old VHS tapes. And they're actually, I think a lot of them are still down here. In here, and this is where I found the Star Wars one anyway. It was down here. Um, well, that's uh, King of the Death Match. That's a, that's a good one. But um, anyway, I grabbed my Star Wars trilogy out of there, which Dad recorded off of the television back in the 80s when he got his first ever VCR. And I had to rewatch it because I didn't believe this. I always thought C-3PO was all gold. I went as that cocksucker for Halloween one year and I was dressed in gold. Had like box and painted gold with spray paint and yeah, it was pretty cool. But uh, for the eyeballs, I think we just used, uh, you know those, uh, you ever go to the um, store and buy those gumball machine? You buy like a fucking toy in a gumball machine for like 25 cents or whatever. It comes in those plastic containers. Well, I used two of those for the eyeballs. Now C-3PO for Halloween one year as a kid and it was pretty awesome. I was all gold, just like him. But apparently, he's not all gold. 
His right leg, from the knee down, is fucking silver. I always remember him as a gold robot. Except for when they had him in uh, the, first, the first one. He was basically silver. Before he got remastered or refixed up by the, uh, the Rebels. But uh, I don't remember him being all uh being gold with silver leg like it's all shit like this like uh apparently uh forrest gump never said life is like a box of chocolates well if he never said it why the fuck is everybody quoting that that's what i don't get it's like he obviously said it i'm pretty sure in the trailer for the movie he's sitting there on the bench with some chick Leans over and says, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Apparently he said life was like a box of chocolates. Was like. No, he fucking didn't. Then there's my favorite one, the Berenstein Bears. Apparently it's not the Berenstein Bears. It's the Berenstain Bears. S-T-A-I-N. So, like, that's just fucked. So, we got talking about that at work. Because one of the guys there just loves the whole concept of it. And what happened to produce this type of a... Uh, a thing, and apparently what he's saying is when they kicked up that Halodon Super Collider, um, they actually destroyed our old reality. <laughs> cool concept, right? Yeah, they fucking destroyed the entire reality, and right now we're living in a sub-reality, like another version that's 0.000001% different than where we were before. And the 0.001% is like the Berenstain Bears and C-3PO with a silver leg, and... Uh, oh, my favorite one was the Queen. We are the champions of the world. Fuck, I... That was like when we won um, in grade 7 for uh, for basketball, we played that song. And at the end, everybody stood up and screamed, Of the world. But it actually ends, We are the champions. And they fucking kill it. And I always remember, We are the champions. And it pauses. And then Buddy comes in and goes, Of the world. And it rolls out with like a hi-hat roll and a little bit of snare. Now he doesn't save the world. He just says, we are the champions, and they do a hi-hat roll, and that's fucking it. It's like, what the hell happened? Pretty crazy, right? Pretty crazy. But not as crazy as people who think the Earth's flat. Them guys are just fucked. Maybe, maybe things were always like that. Maybe Jiffy was always just Jiff, and we just added the Y on the end because it sounded cute. Or maybe it's because Jiffy Lube was around. I don't know. Maybe she always said magic mirror on the wall, but we were stupid and called it mirror mirror because saying the same thing twice is a lot easier than remembering two separate words. I don't know. It's just one of those things that when you look into it and you realize all the things that are not right in your head, versus what's actually out there, and then you start, you know, finding the evidence, going, the fuck, because I watched Star Wars, I watched episode one again, and sure as shit, there's C-3PO, silver fucking leg, and I'm like, no, this can't be, like, I used to watch those movies, uh, well, I used to watch uh, A New Hope, I always called it Star Wars, not A New Hope, I thought that was the episode called Star Wars, so I used to watch that like at least twice a month. And I thought C-3PO was awesome because he could fucking speak any language and he was a little bitch and nobody fucking bothered him because he was a little bitch. And I thought, cool, robot. Look at that. It's like a human robot. One day we're going to build those. That's going to be awesome. Look at him. He's all gold. He's like fucking, whoever owns that robot's rich. He's made of gold, you know. Gold was, it's expensive shit. But no, cocksucker had a scrap metal leg. That's fucked. I don't know, man. You can look it up for yourself. Look up the, the, um, the Mandela effect yourself. And you'll see, like, things that really going to give your head a shake. Who knows, maybe some of the things that happen, maybe you have, like, oh, well, you know what? I got the vinyl of Queen. I have them on a fucking record. That was printed back in the fucking day. I will prove that wrong. And you're going to roll that record and go, what the fuck? How? How? How could it not be the way we remember it? It's like so fucked. And of course I tried talking to the Templars about this the other night because I was like really stoked about it after work and I was like, ah, I gotta talk to those guys about this. this is, they're gonna think this is neat. So I brought it to their attention and they just started talking about other things. So I was like, okay, well obviously I lost them already. Doesn't take much though. But yeah, definitely yeah, give the Mandela effect a look up if you're into that kind of conspiracy shit. I'm not really a conspiracy kind of guy, but they got talking about that at work and I was all like, I'm like, fuck off. No, it isn't. You're just, you're just watching a YouTube video that's showing that. And you're believing it. You're not even doing the research yourself. You're like, all those people saying, don't fucking let Jaden K. Smith be your friend on Facebook because that shit's going to get hacked, you know? That's what I thought right away. Like, these guys are just fucking setting me up to take me down. 
because sometimes we do that at work. We'll fucking tell a white lie to really throw someone off track and, you know, fuck with them a bit. It's fun. But no, no, I looked it up and it's like, this makes no sense. Like, how can this be? <laughs> I don't know. Pretty fucked up shit. Pretty fucked up shit. But it is what it is. And, uh, you know, what can you do when you live in a shoe, right? Fuck it. Well, I don't mean fuck the shoe. I just mean, you know, be happy you got a house, which is a shoe. Probably smells like feet. Anyway, it's a bullshit night here in North Bay. Yeah, it was sunny. It's, it's, it's funny right now. It is 7 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> oh, 7 degrees Celsius, that according to my phone. Yesterday was 32. Yesterday, it was hard to breathe outside. It was so hot and muggy, you could probably chew the air. And today, you almost want to wear a sweater or a spring jacket. Well, not me. I'm fat. I got. I wear my jacket all the time. But a normal person would want to wear a spring jacket. This is like casca fuck, you know? It's January, or sorry, January fuck. It's July 12th, about a third of the way through summer. It's fucking fall weather. Unbelievable. Oh fuck, I just realized something. I never even told you guys what's going on. Or did I? No, I did. I told you guys on Friday. So you guys already know about the Saturday. Yeah, I, I thought I talked about that on Monday when I made the vlog and I made a vlog and it was like, I'm not using this. It's too, me bitching too much and I don't want to be like that anymore. I'm trying to keep her positive on the YouTubes, but I was about to say, like, I'll tell you guys what happened at work and why I'm on the after hours. Uh, but I already told you that, so I don't need to tell you that. It was on last Saturday's vlog, so you can go check that out. But what this means is, I was all worried, like, holy fuck, like, because this week here, they got us working uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, off Thursday, work Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I thought maybe next week was going to be brutal like that, too. But then I thought about it, it's like, well, fuck, if they have us working all those hours, how the hell... Are we going to get any time off? Like, we're going to get way too many hours. We're going to be way over our 40-hour mark. That doesn't make sense. And then I got my schedule today. and went, holy shit. Like, grouped up time off because the weekends are 12-hour shifts. So when you work a weekend, that's 24 hours right there. That means you can only work another 16 hours. And the two eight-hour shifts, hey, take it easy down there. And then you're fucked. You're already at your max limit. So I thought that was pretty cool. Like, when once I saw that, it's like, yeah, it sucks that you got to work... You know, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. on some days, and you know, uh, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. and and so on and so forth. But what's cool about it is you get a nice chunk of days off. And doing this YouTube thing as a weekly uh, episode, it means I might be able to keep her up, boys. Now, obviously, it's summertime right now, so basically, there's a lot of shit I need to get done. A lot of shit that I've already did, but a lot of shit that I want to do. With these back-to-back -back days off in a row, it means I'll be able to do them, weather permitting. Now, obviously, once winter hits, that's going to be a different story. Fuck, man, I'm really going gray. Holy shit. Should buy some of that just for men and bring my black back, eh? I'm starting to look like a fucking grandpa over here crying out loud. But at least I'm not going bald. So I panicked at first thinking, you know what, this work is going to really consume me. It's going to reduce the length of my vlogs, even though like I don't really treat YouTube as a, a major priority in my life anymore. I still do like doing it. I still do like making the videos and editing and, and all that. And I guess somebody at work told them I do YouTube and they were watching them and they liked the way I edit and stuff. And they said, hey, maybe in the future we might be able to use you to edit up some of our, our promos and stuff. Would you be interested? And I'm like, sure. Want me to film too? What kind of camera do you have? I said, well, I film with a, a Sony cam, a Sony 1080p camcorder, but I have a DSLR at home. If I could ever learn how to set it, I could probably use that too. Oh, really? Oh, well, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Might have to. Okay, we'll keep you on. The, we'll keep you uh, posted. We'll, we'll let you know. I was like, well, okay. And honestly, I think I, I'd make an okay cameraman to walk around, and take shots of things, and stream them together as a video for like you know, demonstration purposes or advertisement purposes. The vlogs, it's its hard to really get crazy with editing because I don't do any B-roll. I really don't. I just, I don't know. I just, I, I just don't. I probably should. Maybe B-roll will bring out the production value a bit more. And whenever I try to add music in the background, people just get mad at me. So I just keep her simple, stupid. You know, the old kiss statement. And fucking roll. But I'm sure if I wanted to, I could produce some pretty good fucking video. Getting the shots, setting up the shots, thinking of shots, getting shit did. 
<clears throat> oh, fuck. If I wanted to, I could probably even produce something like what my Juggernaut has just produced. The Devil Inside. You know, one of those. But, yeah. 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 I just don't have the time to produce anything crazy like that. I don't mind just shooting my life and with the shit I do around the house and stuff. And you guys seem to get a kick out of it. So that's all right. That's all right by me. Don't need to be uh, everybody being big jugger Juggernuggets out there and try and tell stories. Sometimes the best story to tell is the real one called Life. Maybe. Of course, that's how you open yourself up to fucking goofs and trolls. But, I don't know. It's not my fault they were breastfed till they are 22. So at around 9 o'clock tonight, they're calling for tea bangers in the air. So we'll probably get a thunderstorm. That'll suck. And they're calling for rain and storming all day tomorrow. So we won't do any outside activities. Which is a shame because all those weeds in the front yard are back. I mowed them down, but the cocksuckers are resilient. So what I'm thinking is I'll have to find something to do inside. Also, I need to go fuel up the uh, the truck. I've been driving for six weeks on the truck. Six weeks driving, just bombing around. You know, doing groceries, going to work, driving around to get things, dump run, all this other stuff. And I'm finally down to three eighths of a tank. Six weeks. That's what happens when you have a 132 liter, or 136 liter fucking tank. So probably have to fuel her up. I don't like letting it get below a quarter. So probably gonna do that tomorrow who gives a fuck i'm getting gas right and i really need to figure out what i'm gonna do but well if it's raining i don't want to go pick up cement because i gotta put the bags in the box and i don't have a tono that'll have to weigh that and i want to talk to dad because he wants me to get some shit called ready mix and like i said earlier ready mix is, is like 20 bucks a bag i'm not, not earlier i think i said it on saturday's vlog i can't remember now but if i didn't ready mix is 20 bucks a bag quick reet which is quick setting concrete is four dollars a bag and they're both 60 pound bags so why the fuck would i buy ready mix quick read just says just add water and presto concrete i was thinking about actually just picking up two bags and using those templates is it still raining outside or did it calm down finally oh that's not too bad anyway i was thinking about uh digging up this here piece of shit throwing that cinder block away or just moving it whatever and digging this up and then getting some uh some gravel laying it down packing it down making it good and then doing the stepping stones here to see how they turn out. Now, I watched a video on YouTube of the template and one guy said that one uh, one bag per template and I would dig out the templates but they're way the fuck back there. I don't feel like moving a bunch of shit around to do it. So that's out of the question. Oh fuck, these are gonna be delicious. Oh my God. Two pork chops, seasoned, fucking marinated. Oh man. So stoked and mushrooms galore. This dinner's gonna be fucking fantastic boys. But no, I was thinking about doing it. I'm going to pick up like two bags and doing two sets of the stones right in from the garage to give like a landing and seeing how they work. Because last week on the video, you saw me clear out that back area right over yonder. And you can walk right across that. You don't sink or anything. So what I'm thinking is I wanna lay down herbicide there, kill everything. Oh, focus there, bud. There you go. I want to lay down herbicide, kill everything. And then I want to dig it up. And I was honestly thinking about doing interlocking brick as like a patio and then putting a fire pit in the middle of some sort, like a brick one or whatever, just something that I can have a fire in. Because the fire inspector said that it has to be at least uh, four meters from any burnable thing. Well, I'm four meters away from the trees back there. I'm four meters away from the neighbor's retaining wall. A fucking ton of meters away from that, from, from those raspberry bushes. Like here, I'll zoom out and give you a perspective. It'd be perfect area to have a fire pit. I think it'd be mint. Not sure how often I'd use the damn thing, but it'd be mint to have it. And fuck, I got a water droplet on the lens. God dang it. Anyway, dinner's ready. So I'm going to bring this in and my empties. And uh, it's fucking om nom time. It's so good. Oh, hey guys. How's it? Fuck, I forgot to charge the camera. God damn it. It's about to die. But how's it going today, guys? Um, It's Thursday here on Vlogging Life. I got a day off today. I slept in big time. It's currently like 3.30. Fucking, I got to go to bed in like seven hours. <clears throat> Otherwise, tomorrow's going to be rough. Shouldn't have slept so long, but I did. It is what it is. And uh, I really don't care. But I don't think I'll be doing much filming today with this camera in its state. Um, What was I thinking about doing today? Well, Originally, I planned on today to be a storm day, like, as in, fucking shitty weather. Apparently, that's not the case. Apparently, it's sunny as fuck outside and blue skies. Oh, yeah. This is what happens when you listen to the weather dicks. They get it wrong. Is that camera on? Yeah, okay. But, um, yeah, I guess I forgot to plug my camera in last night, and the battery depleted, so that sucks. Um, speaking of cameras, I was reading the comments on the last video, and people were like, holy fuck, you still use a camcorder. You should get a new camera. Well, I bought this camera a year ago, and I'm still using it, and I don't believe in replacing something if it's still doing the job. And this camera is still, in fact, doing the job. 
So why would I replace it? And the camera I was quoted to get was uh, the same one a lot of bigger YouTubers use. It's a point and shoot from Canon with a 20 megapixel lens. It's a nice camera, but it's also a thousand dollars. I don't have that kind of money to fucking throw out a camera. Or, you know, I don't really do YouTube that much lately. I'm only doing one show a week. So why would I invest a thousand dollars into an item that I don't need to? Like, it doesn't make sense, right? Use what you got to get the job did. And when what you got doesn't work anymore because it's broken or whatever the case may be, then replace it. At least that's my logic. Talk about wasting a day, eh? Well, I didn't really. I cleaned up in here a bit. But something I want to do is uh, go to the beer store and drop off all my empties because I got about three bags up here plus two cases of bottles plus a case of uh, 12 JR plus a case downstairs of 28 bud it's gotta go this is why I'm fat all right I got the track started yep I've been driving now for six weeks people and I think it's time to get some gas yep thought it had uh, well I'm on an angle too so it's probably affecting the way the fuel reads but I got just a little over a quarter. That's six weeks worth of driving. It's probably gonna be about a $130 fill. And I got all my beer right inside me. Fuck it. Let's go to the beer store and drop this shite off. Alrighty, just dropped off all the beer. So let's go and get some gas and go home. Pitter patter. Well, there you go. After six weeks of driving, it cost me $94 to fill the truck at 88 liters used. In six weeks. During barbecuing, I'll explain why this is uh an interesting number. All right, we're out here in the garage. It's fucking warm out. That's kind of cool. I don't even know if you can see that floating in the air. It's one of those mystic ghost sticks. Anywho, I got these things to cook tonight. Uh, peppered eyed round steak. Pretty good. Pretty good. They're uh, they're cheap. That's why I bought them. Because like me, I'm cheap, which is. Good. So I mentioned that uh, $94 to fill the truck after six weeks was pretty good. And a lot of you are probably saying, holy fuck, Adam, that's $94. That's expensive. And you're right. It is kind of costly. Um, it has a 136 liter tank. And in six weeks, I used 80, what was it, 87 liters of fuel. Which means that truck with its five liter is more fuel efficient than my old G6 was. Don't believe me? I used to spend on the G6 an easy, and I mean an easy, $45 to $50 every two weeks in fuel. And I drove around with that thing as much as I drive around with this thing, you know? Go to work, come home. Sometimes go to a friend's house, come home. Sometimes do uh, go to the grocery store, come home. I don't really cruise around. There's a lot of people, I guess, down south. Like, like when I went to visit Bloke, for instance, over there, <laughs> We were always on the go. We were always in the car. We were always in the truck. We were always doing something. We were always driving around. Wake up in the morning, have your coffee, put on your boots, head in the truck, and go and do stuff. Every fucking day. But up here, it's like, I go to the grocery store, I pick up my ship for the week, and then I'm good. I don't have to go to the grocery store for another week, you know? I go to uh, the beer store, drop off my empties, and then pick up beer when I'm going to have it. Like, right now, I don't have any beer in the house. That's fine. Because uh, i got to work for the next three days. But on Saturday night, I'm going to pick up a case for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So, because I don't drive much, because I have no reason to, um, I don't really do cruises because, well, fuck, I'm not 20. I just drive to get places. I commute. 90% of the time, the truck sits in this driveway. I bomb to work. I bomb home. So, in theory, last time I filled up, the truck had 343 kilometers on it. Total. Not on the trip meter, but total kilometers. Now it has about 960. So that means I put about 630 kilometers on it. We'll say we'll say 650 as a round number. 650 kilometers on it. On the old G6, like that's what I love about this thing here. I filled it up there and it says uh, uh, 892 kilometers till empty. Where on the G6 I'd fill it up and it would say 280 kilometers till empty because it was there's something critically wrong with the fucking thing. Probably the engine was needing some work or I don't know. I, I really don't know. Not my problem. You know, it's not my pig, not my farm. Who gives a shit? But bottom line is, is that car was expensive on fuel. The truck, however, is not, which is, well, it is and it isn't. You know, I'm sure if I uh, drove around a lot more, um, I would have benefited from an EcoBoost over the V8, especially because my buddy, James, he just went and traded in his Chevy Silverado because he was sick and tired of GM contacting him with fucking recalls. And I shit you not, that's what he told me. He's like, I was sick and tired of bringing it to the GM dealership, getting a recall done, only to wait two to three weeks 
to have another fucking recall notice come in because something else is wrong on the truck. Like, if they can't build it right, he didn't want to own it because he has a family and doesn't want to be driving around in something that's just going to fucking eject Ocedo, cuz. So he said, fuck it, and he went and got himself a third. He bought pretty much the same truck as me, except for his is a four-door, and he's got the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. And he just did the run from North Bay to uh, Red Lake, Ontario, which is like some isolated community out in fucking wherever it is, pretty far away, and it took him a quarter of a tank of gas. When he fills his truck, it says 999 plus kilometers till empty. On the highway, he showed the, uh, the, the thing, the display, on the highway, he was getting six, no, 7.9 liters per 100 kilometers. In the city, he's getting 11.3 liters per 100 kilometers on an eco-boosted six. Pretty fucking decent, right? But I've known people in the past, Stuff's being one of them, who bought an eco-boost. And the first year, I was like, holy fuck, look at the fuel economy, this is amazing. But then it just started getting progressively worse and worse and worse and worse. All of a sudden, he was in V8 territories. So that was my biggest complaint about the eco-boost was it starts off great, but then later on, it's not as great as it was some people say well that's what happens when the engine breaks in but i thought when the engine breaks in things are supposed to get better not progressively worse i could be wrong i usually am right hmm. but uh apparently what it is it's carbon built up on the heads and it causes flow problems and unburned fuel problems and some other problems because it's all uh, gas direct injection systems now where they direct uh, they directly inject the fuel right into the combustion chamber rather than at the throttle body, have it atomized in the air there, and then get in. One of the biggest problems is, and people thought maybe that was the, the problem, it's not. The main problem is, on these new trucks, the PCV valve likes to blow oil by. That blow by oil goes right back into the air circulation system, right back into the engine. Eco boosts are especially bad for it, so the one thing you want to do, which is a mod that shouldn't even be classified as a mod, Ford should have just fucking done this from the factory, is you want an oil catch can in place. Sit between, between the PCV valve and your air intake, and let it catch all the fucking blow bite oil. And that way there, it doesn't go back through your air breather, and it doesn't go into the engine again, and it doesn't burn. Problem solved. Maybe. Bye, Birdie. I can tell you a couple things right now that I like and dislike about this truck. And, huh, there's another Birdie. Are they all flying by? What the freak? Can I come outside, or are you guys going to buzz me? Sons of bitches. But um, I can tell you some likes and dislikes about this thing. And, you know, they're completely subjective to my own personal opinion and it's up to you whether you take it with a grain of salt or what but for me one of the things that I dislike about it is without the runner boards it can be a pain to get into sometimes you really got to get your leg up there and jump into her not a big deal but it can be kind of a pain wish it had runner boards but I've been told by multiple people that runner boards in the winter is a bad time because snow builds up and it gets stuck between the runner board in the frame and it rots the frame prematurely. Uh, Rex told me that and a few others have. So I was like, all right, cool, whatever. Another aesthetic thing that I don't like about, about the truck is how the ass end sits. How it's like on an angle all times. I understand the reason for that is if you put heavy weight in the back, it's gonna level it off by putting more stress on the, uh, the springs and make it sit lower. I, I, I completely understand, but I just wish it's resting its resting stance was level. This reminds me of my two-wheel drive Sierra from back in the day, how she's like ass ends high and, you know, it reminds me of a dog doing a stretch, if you will. My other uh, little bit of a complaint is these box links down at the bottom. You know, when you put a lot of shit in the truck, if you don't remember to attach your straps prior, like for the dump run, it's kind of a bitch to get your strap around those hooks. It's not exactly easy because now you're trying to maneuver all that weight you put into the truck out of the way so you can run your strap. Kind of a pain in the ass. I wish it had the ones up here, but you can get those aftermarket or you can buy them when you get the truck. It's up to you. Some people don't like them up here because then they can't run a tonneau cover. So completely subjective, up to you. The only other complaint I have is when you're riding in the truck. You can pretty much look over your shoulder and see everything on that side of you, no problem, okay? When you look over your shoulder on this side, all you see is this great big black pillar of, of nothingness. And you can't tell if something's right beside you. So that's when you're checking your mirrors. I love these mirrors, by the way, but I find that they should have brought the window back to about here and then ran it up instead of having all this black dead space. You learn, you lean, you look, 
Just gotta move around a lot more on the truck to find out where shit is. Now, I know one of the complaints that Adrian had with his truck when he first got it was he said the headlights were not bright enough. So, I don't know what these are like at night yet. And I'll be finding out not next, well not this weekend, but next weekend when we start our night shifts. Because I'll be driving to work at 11 p.m. And I'll know exactly if, uh, if it sucks or if it's good. And the fog lights also, I never tested them, so I don't know how effective they are, but we'll find that out next week for sure. Now the things I like about the truck, let me tell you, there's a lot higher list of things that I like about the truck. The entertainment system on it. Even though it's the base model entertainment system, the original sync, it fucking works good. You know, you put a USB pen drive in there and you can run your music just like you could with a, with a Dodge with their music keg setup. Or not music keg, well, just like anything with USB. You know, you put it in and it detects it, you go. You can stream music from your phone, not just from your phone's memory, but you can install Spotify on your phone and stream that Bluetooth right to the stereo if you want to. So that just gives you a whole limitless amount of music that you can listen to in a day. And if you have a really good data plan, you could probably put XM on your, on your, on your phone and give her there. But most of these things here, except for mine, came with an XM radio. I didn't want it because fuck, why would I want to pay a subscription to something that I probably won't use that much. Even when I had XM radio back in the day in the G6, I never used the fucking thing. Another itsy bitsy thing I don't like about the truck, but it's not a big deal, is the transmission. I find it takes a little bit too long to go between gears. Like you'll be driving along and it'll rev up and then it wants to go in the second. And it's like, it's like that new person driving a, uh, a manual transmission, you know? Boom, boom, boom. Like taking forever to fucking throw their gears in. It's pretty much the same. Like it's, what the fuck was that? Okay, I'm, this is, I should rename this vlog that I'm under a fucking attack. Wait, what is that? Focus, you slut. Is that a chippy? Oh, where are you going, bud? Hey, stay out of my garage, okay? Fuck. But um, you can fix that there's slow shift by putting her in sport mode. But then in sport mode, it drives like it's a CVT. Like when you're in third gear and you let off the throttle, it starts, it's like the... It's like it doesn't let you coast. It's really weird. Really, really weird. But it is what it is. It doesn't really take away from the performance of the truck. It just it just doesn't feel right. I have yet to try manual mode and I have no use for tow mode yet because I never towed anything bigger than dad's trailer. And I only did that once. Now, something people have asked me over time since I bought the truck was, well, Adam, you've had it for a couple months now. If you could do it again, what would you do differently? And honestly, the only thing I might do differently is consider the EcoBoost. I might have considered it. Uh, getting the um, the boosted six, probably the 2.7 liter, or maybe the 3.5 for that extra power. But the 2.7 liter v, uh, V6 EcoBoost still put out a reasonable 350 horse. Pretty decent. And when it was not towing or hauling anything, it got the fuel economy of a fucking Honda Civic, so that's kind of cool. I might have opted for the two and a half door option. I think they call it crew cab or, you know, where you got the suicide door in the back. I might have opted for that because it would be nice to have a little bit more space behind the seats to put shit, but the two door is still good. I make it work for me, you know? It's a good thing I don't have a family or anybody riding with me. Because if I did, groceries in the box of a truck, probably not the ideal situation, but it's possible. You know, other than those two things, that's about all I would probably change. Maybe the color. There's a couple nice colors from Ford. You know, I really wish I would have taken the time and maybe potentially built my truck. But when he showed me this one here, it had everything I wanted at the price of a base model. And I was like, well, fuck, do her up, bud. So um, black is shit, I'm not gonna lie. I can wash that truck right now, come out an hour later, and it looks like I didn't even bother wasting my like didn't even bother wasting the time to wash it. Like it's it's black is not a good color. It looks nice when the sun's down, looks like ass when the sun's up. But honestly, I'm thinking like this truck was like the best purchase I ever made because it's fun to drive. You can see everything from sitting in that driver's seat. Uh pretty much goes anywhere. I'm not a fan of the tires. I'll tell you right now, those tires are garbage. This truck will not off-road with those fucking tires, but they're street tires. They're not designed to go into mud and stuff. 
Because when I backed the truck up in the backyard, and then Dad came over, Dad's like, give me the fucking keys and let me back that thing up. He was pissed. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He was just joking around, but... He was like, give me the fucking keys, let me back that thing up, because the truck wasn't close enough to the shed. So he jumped in, he started backing it up, and I don't know if the holes are still there, but he fucking did a wicked burnout in the backyard. Threw pretty much a whole bunch of grass. I want to see if it's still there. Yeah, right, right, right here, he spun her, spun her pretty good. It's not as bad as it was, but you can see that my backyard's really soft. You can tell where I drove. I came up right here a couple times and shot around and blew out there. But yeah, kind of a kind of a shitty deal for the tires um, when you're losing traction here. Like I had to use four by because I kept slipping, but they're street tires. I'm pretty sure if I got a more aggressive tire, I wouldn't have had that situation. I could have two-wheeled her all the way out, but in its current state, off-roading with something like this, not recommended. I'm both anxious to see and, you know, can totally wait to see how that truck's gonna handle in the winter. Cause number one, I've never driven anything rear wheel drive in the winter. Well, I shouldn't say that cause I did drive the Sierra in the winter and that was fucking sketchy. Not gonna lie, that was sketchy. Two wheel drives with like fucking pizza cutter tires, 230 horse under the hood. The SN got away on me a couple times. Not gonna lie, not gonna lie. I didn't crash it, but fucking came close once. It was pretty good. So it'll be interesting to see how this thing handles the winter months. I'm uh, both excited and scared, not gonna lie. So, while my steak is cooking, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the backyard here, grab our little piss shooter. I wanna test this thing out over here. It's gonna pick a patch of, of area in the shade here, and we're gonna blast it. We're gonna, here, let's nuke this. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this thing. into more of a spray. Let's hose this all down here and we'll just see what happens. Now I honestly don't ex expect super results but you never know, you never know. Mainly because it's not supposed to rain now until after the weekend or until the weekend I should say. It's supposed to be pretty good all weekend, or uh, tomorrow anyway. So this will have a good time to set. And then we'll check on it later on and see if it browned off. If not, then I'm gonna have to work on my recipe. And what is my recipe? Oh, that's uh, on the DL there, boys. But uh, some of you know what it is because you told me, hey, do this and mix this with this and it works great. So we'll give her a go. As much of this soaked as possible. And we should be golden. Beauty. She's all saturated with the uh, the piss. The piss is resistance. I'm just gonna dribble some on this plant here. Oh yeah, you like that kind. Yeah, you love that kind. Oh yeah, you love it. You love it lots. And we'll check on that at a later date and see if it browns off. I know the uh, other stuff that I had pretty much browned off the grass over here pretty damn quick. And remember when I sprayed in front of the garage yesterday? Just fucking around. Well, look what happened when I sprayed. What the hell was that? Okay. Look at what happened to where I sprayed. Just turned all brown. So, I guess we'll wait and see what happens. Dinner is served. Just gotta wait for the dog to come back in, and then it's om nom time. Oh, and there's the puppy now. Oreo! What are you doing? What are you even doing? What are you doing? What? Really? Really? Okay. I swear he doesn't do that when the camera's off. 